Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Hello and welcome to USA Global TV and radio in partnership with E360 TV. My name is Caroline Heward and I'm known as the Harley Street Stress Expert. And tonight's show is called A Woman's Prerogative. It's a show for women, by women, women about women. Our topic tonight is deciphering decisions, deciphering choices, the science behind decision making, part two. Our earlier part this evening, which I was part of the panel for at 5 p.m. GMT time, was very, very eye-opening and interesting. It was eye-opening in so many ways. There was lots of very, very powerful shares. And I am sure tonight that our wonderful guest who's coming in as part of our expert panel, Mariska Tapria, is going to be sharing such a lot of useful insights from her incredible background of engineering. So without further ado, I'd like to bring out Mariska Dupree. Hello, Hello. Caroline. <laughs> it's so lovely to see you in your morning and I'm in good night. <laughs> Yes, yes. Very late for you there in the UK and very early for me here in New Zealand. It is. So Mariska, for our new viewers, as well as our, our regular viewers, please tell our audience who you are, what you do and how you help people. And more importantly, how people can contact you. Well, my name is Mariska Dupria, so if you have not seen me before because you are one of our new viewers, welcome. We love to have new people around. And if you have seen me before, either on the show or maybe on Talking Hits, welcome back. So I work with leaders and help leaders to develop. So I'm within the leadership development space and helping new upcoming leaders. So if you are thinking of becoming a leader or maybe stepping into that leadership space, I help you as well as people that has gone through a little bit more of their leadership journey and maybe go to the next phase of their leadership. I also help you. And how do we do this? Well, Leadership development comes in all sorts of shapes and forms and sizes. And one of the places that we help is to bring a little bit more of that humanness into the way that we lead and looking at how we look at the different perspectives we hold within our leadership space. Because from time to time, the way we think might just be the thing that's holding us and our team back from actually achieving all those wonderful, great things that I know you are able to achieve. So how do you go about contacting me? That is quite easy. You can do that via email, which is mariska at journey to the number two discover.com. Or alternatively, you can do that via LinkedIn. And there you can just look for me and drop me a direct message and we can start our conversation to get you on track to be the best leader 
that your team surely deserves and you too. Caroline, I also heard you speaking about being a stress expert. Please tell us more. Oh, yes. Thank you. Wonderful, Mariska. Uh, well, I'm known as the Harley Street stress expert. How do I help people? I literally help people bust their stress. What do I do to do that? Well, I listen to your complaints, what it is that you have your symptoms with, whether it be physical, emotional, mental or behavioural, whether you're complaining about that relationship, whether you're complaining about an ache or pain or a physical ache and pain, such as sleep problems, whether you are angry or whether you are recently bereaved of a relative or a close member of family. So it's whatever you're complaining about is how your stress is manifesting in your life. How do I help you? I identify the root cause. What caused your problem in the first place? I work with root cause therapy using chakra psychology. And that's how the mind and body connects and what happens to the person physically, emotionally, mentally, behaviorally when there's an imbalance. The imbalance is the symptom. If you're one of those people that walk around and say, I'm not stressed, but I don't sleep very well, and I have this real ache and pain in my low back, that's how your stress is manifesting. You can reach me on no more stress at live.co.uk or call if you're international using plus 44, if you're local, 07523 120 189. I offer a free consultation either online or if you're camera shy on, uh, on call and I break through one symptom that is causing your stress. Obviously, be walking around with more than one symptom, and so I offer a program that's right for you to break through all of your symptoms. So that's me. I'm known as the Harley Street Stress Expert. So let's move into our topic tonight. Very juicy topic. <laughs> So tell me, Mariska, and share with our viewers, when you have a big decision to make, and it might be um, recently moving home or something really major, like a big purchase, how would you go about making that choice and that decision? Yes, this is indeed a million dollar question, especially for those people in marketing, because now we will reveal what they need to do in order to market to us. No, not really. So for me, it depends on my intention. So I think that's where my decision making typically starts off is understanding what's the intention behind what I want to be doing and then working backwards from that. Um, and breaking it down into smaller steps and seeing what works best for me and how it works. So to give you a bit of an idea, a while back, well, this was a couple of years while back, um, me and Hubby were looking at different vehicles. So initially we were looking at a vehicle and the intention behind the vehicle was, well, we have two growing teenagers at that stage, teenagers, and we need something that can accommodate them, all their gear, and friends. So we had a bit of a look at different vehicles. And of course, a small little two-seat sport car would not be it. So we went for something with a few more seats and a little bit more space to actually pack all the stuff that we wanted. And capacity to also pull if ever we needed to get any other additional stuff that we wanted to draw around in different areas. So that was the intention of the vehicle. And then of course, we went and looked for what the vehicle might be. In a different scenario, same vehicle thing, the intention was different though. So my husband wanted the car specifically for traveling to work and he was traveling quite a distance. Plus we needed to pack the fuel. So we wanted something that was as economic as possible, uh, didn't need to be the hugest vehicle on the planet, and it also needed to be safe. So that then became our checklist things that we needed to look at in order for us to decide which vehicle to go to. 
And of course, you keep narrowing down, right? So you'll end up going, okay, so which are the best ones in their category for all the vehicles? And then sort of go next step, okay, after that, and next step, and next step. And initially, uh, we wanted one type of vehicle, so I think it was a Citroen. And unfortunately, <laughs> they weren't in the country, uh, not the one that we were looking for and specifically. So we ended up going for a Reynolds, which my husband loved. It had all the features that he wanted, and it had really good fuel consumption. So, ta-da, decision made. So that's typically the way that I would go about decision making. And I also know from research that most people don't necessarily work that way. And there's normally a little bit or a lot of emotion involved. So I'm not sure. Caroline, what's your process and how much or little? Does emotion play a part in that? Oh, you ask a, t a chilling question because <laughs> I'm <laughs> going to say something that's actually a little same and quite different. And in the respect of, yes, I have an intention set to begin with, especially if it's for, if it's for something very big like a home. I don't drive. So moving home was like the biggest thing that I've ever done. And when I first bought a property, that was my very big purchase. So I would I would look at that. And in looking at my home as being the big thing, I would say that emotion to begin with played a huge, huge part of it because my idealistic choice and decision was I had this idyllic view of living on the coast. I really wanted to live next to the seaside. I wanted to wake up in the morning and hear the sun, sorry, hear the, see the sun and have the wind and the waves crashing by me and just to feel that sea air and to be very close to the seaside so that all I would literally do is walk for five or 10 minutes and I'd be on the beach. Now that was my idyllic. And I'd carried that idea and that intention with me for a number of decades. I wanted to live by the sea. Now, I went and viewed properties when I eventually got to look to buying a property when I'd sold my London home. And the properties in Wales, because I wanted to move to the Gower Peninsula, which has beautiful beaches, very unspoilt nature. And one of the challenges I had when I was looking at the time that I'd sold my London property is that the prices had gone up and my property price had gone down. So then I started to get into the kind of thinking that you're talking about, where I was saying, mm, well, that's not going to work. So what I've now got to do is look at what my budget is and what fits with the budget. And in the, our world, time changes. A lot of people had, had literally exited London and moved to coastal properties. So the coastal properties went up and London properties went down. That was a challenge, and I had to get very practical. So I thought, hmm, where else can I go? And so I went from Wales to the north of England and found Seaside. And I thought, right then, I'm going to go and look there. And it said it was desirable, and I went to a place not very far from here, and the, the properties were smaller than I had imagined. They didn't have those lovely high ceilings that I was hoping for. And more to the point, they were damp because they had been flooded uh, a couple of decades ago. And I didn't actually think about that or consider the damp floods. I had not, that had just not entered my head. I'd been very idyllic and very emotional about my choice and about my decision of living near the coast. And so when I started to become practical, that's when my head got into gear. I needed to find a property that was off a floodplain. And now we've had in the UK a number of floods and we've had a lot of very seriously rainy weather that has flooded our rivers. Because the other thing that I wanted to do is if I couldn't get seaside, I wanted to live near a river. I wanted an address 
And I did have an address a, a quite a long time ago for a short time in the north of England, and the address was Three Riverside. And that was, again, idyllic and emotional. I'm so glad I didn't go with my emotions. And what I found is the property and the new home that I have now is out of a floodplain. And there has been many places that I was looking at uh, in terms of near the coast and by rivers that have been flooded. So I am relieved I got out of my emotion and into a practical level-headed decision of finding the kind of property I was looking for, which I found, and close, not very far away. So I have a little travel to do, about 20 minutes, half an hour, but I can get to the coast without being flooded out. So tell me, Mariska, what do you think about the fact that I went from emotional to extortionately practical? I love the fact that it, it it's a bit of a journey. It's yeah. not a, and that I think is part of the decision-making process. So understanding our process, our, this is my go-to and then this is my next step, this is my next step. And what I, what I really appreciate about what you shared, especially for your home journey, home is, home is really one of those places where, one, it's a large amount of money, and two, we need to love it, which is all emotion and heart, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's not home. It's just a house. And you were able to go through that whole process and get a place that, from our previous conversations my perception was you really love and you can make your own and it's only a short distance not walking distance but a short distance still <laughs> from the ocean so it it gives you all those goodnesses that you were looking for plus the benefit of not having to worry about having a riverboat home or something that needs to be driftable uh, because you are safe and sound out of floodplains well you know and it's still going on here so I'm so I'm just relieved I'm relieved I got out of my my emotion in into my head you know and got very practical so but it was it was a huge journey because I was fixed I was really fixed on moving mm -hmm. to the Gower Peninsula all the really beautiful beaches and the historic culture there. I, I just saw myself there and I was really gutted. And at the same time, I'm hearing a lot of Wales is flooded. The plate, one of the places I was looking at was absolutely flooded. There was a number of properties that were right on the beach that were flooded out. And I'm thinking, boy, am I so glad I didn't go into my emotions and just purchase it anyway. So that was a really huge lesson for me and a big, big journey because I was saying I have to let go of this. Now what? Mm -hmm. And it was a very sizable investment. And I left a very wonderfully beautiful, comfortable property in London. And I didn't want to go to somewhere that was essentially going to be damp and dark and horrible and be weather dependent so what I've got is not weather dependent cross fingers and toes I've not been caught out in the draft in the in the uh, the floods and everything that's you know the weather has thrown at us in the UK recently so moving into emotions because you know I had a near a near escape really and I could have been very emotional about that purchase mm -hmm. you know because I really wanted that this home to be on the coast and I kind of got out of it very, it took me time, but it, I got out of that emotion. So let's look at emotion. Have you ever made a decision from the place of emotion and then either regretted it or considered that you could have made a different or better decision if you hadn't gone into your emotions in making that decision? That's a very good question. Um, I think for me, I suspect, so from what I understand, not only in research, but also thinking about me as a human being, 
we typically function with everything. Whether we want to think, and this is this is an interesting topic and discussion because I work with so many engineers. And typically people within the engineering field or within any heavy numbers wise specialization has a tendency to think that we don't necessarily make decisions with our emotions. Hmm. And we always have some form of bias. Now, when we think about a bias, the bias is typically formed because we have some emotional attachment to something or not to something else. So one of the things that I have realized over time is there will always be some emotional information that comes through. And the reason why I am drawn to something or repelled from something is most probably because I'm having an emotional response to it. So they do play into my decision making and understanding this upfront is helpful for me to then go, okay, so is this decision, what, what might be the impact of it? Um, or what might be the resultant things that I would get from it? Now, we can't always say, because realistically, we don't have a crystal ball and we cannot see the future. So it may or may not be what we think it would be. And the only predictions that we can realistically make is from the past. So things we have seen before. And typically we have a tendency to also stay true to form. So whatever decision it is that we make, we may or may not make to our detriment because we have this continual pattern that we move on. So understanding all of this is one thing. Living all of this is quite a different story. So when it comes to decisions, and I know my husband sometimes get really, really frustrated with me, especially when it's something big, when we need to buy a house, a car, you name it. Something that has a lot at stake and I'll have to live with it for a long period of time. It takes me a while to actually get to the thing. I won't, even if I have that initial, oh, yes, I want this because I'm drawn to it for whatever reason, I will still go back and do a little bit of a pros and cons list. And sometimes, the emotional piece will override all the rest. And from time to time, it might not be the wisest decision. So it might be that I stepped into one of my old behavioral traps, which wasn't the best thing to be doing. Or from time to time, I don't. So it's, for me, it is always learning. I'm always learning a little bit more about myself, about how I work and what works best for me and getting that validation. So the times when I went with it and it worked out, what exactly around it worked out, why was this a good decision for me and how does it work for me, helps me to then refine my decision-making process and be able to lean into my emotions as uh, almost flags to say, yes, this is a go flag and this is a don't go flag when it comes to decision making and not be always drawn to well the things that's only fun or that I would love to be doing because Caroline as you mentioned earlier on there might be aspects of it that I didn't take into consideration and I know how it is to live in a place that gets flooded because of water going literally through the house it is not a lot of fun. So would that be necessarily a place that I would choose to go and live? Most likely not. And uh, sometimes we only know this once we've gone through it. And sometimes we can see it up front. So we also learn from our experiences. And I think that's the main thing for me is as long as I've learned something from whatever decision I made, I'm good. And whether that was a more emotionally inclined one or not, I'm still good because I learned a lesson. And it may or may not have had a positive outcome. 
as long as I've learned the lesson, I am happy. And how about you, Caroline? What, what have you found over time? How has your process evolved? Well, I love the fact that you said learn the lesson because you've just reminded me of something that I did when I bought my London property. It was my very first purchase of a, of a home. And I, in London, it's, um, it's very expensive. And so I started to hear the term leasehold. And it was very hard to buy a whole house. So I was looking at properties within properties, so a huge double fronted property with flats, um, apartments inside. So in the properties that I was looking at, there was like four or five different properties or flats within the one large house. Uh, the purchase that I made was over 600 square foot. So it was huge. It was actually larger than some of the houses that I have looked at that are up for sale. And what I really loved about it, and this was the emotional side, is that I love the high ceilings. I love the fact that all the walls were whitewashed and it was really clean. It had just been done. I was the first person in there and it had all those feel good things about it. And what I did was I then was gushing about how wonderful it was and I was telling the estate agent, oh, this is the best property. I've compared it with other properties around the area. And this is the best one. This is the one that I'm going to go for. And this is definitely, it, it overrides everything else that I've seen. And I was gushing. I saw it twice. And on the second time, I then made an offer. Gushing about how amazing it was against all the other properties that I had seen. I put an offer in, so I started to play the game. And the offer I put in was less than the asking price. And I had an immediate response back to say, no, he wants full asking price or go away. Don't bother. And I says, oh, and I wasn't expecting that. I thought, oh, gosh, you know, that's that wasn't what I was expecting. And I was hoping to get a little off the price. And I, I he came back and said, no, I want full asking price because they've not long been on the market and I'm going to wait until I get it. I really wanted this property and they knew that. And because I had let them know everything, I let them know how I really wanted it, how it was the best property. I'd made my choice and I thought, oh boy, I can't play the game now. So I then realized and understood that there was a, a tax on top of the price that I had to pay that I wasn't aware of. So I put in an asking price, a, a, a buying price with that tax in mind and said, this is my final offer because it takes me over the limit of what I can actually afford. If I go any further, I wasn't aware of this tax. And now I am, I cannot pay full asking price. And if that's what he needs, then I walk because there isn't any more money. So I got from emotion to playing the practical, logical game. And he came back almost immediately within about five minutes of me making the offer. I got, yes, he's accepted your offer. So that was a learning, you know, that if I ever go to view a property again, which I did, I would look at the negatives and paint the negatives so that I would say I'd got options. And I was looking at other properties that were matching up to what this property was. And I would go in lower or be absolutely very realistic about my budget and tell them this is the top of my budget. I learned so much from that. And it took me 15 years to move from like gushing and telling them everything and then having to pay full price and then moving to this property, becoming mortgage free, but actually, more importantly, understanding how that game works. And everything becomes a game, especially with estate agents. And when I put my offer in for this property that I'm now living in, I said, this is all the budget that I have. This is the highest that I can offer and there is no more. And if they refuse it, then I walk. 
And so I started right at the beginning because I was very limited in time and I got it for what I could afford and what the budget was rather than having to wait all those extra days. So that's the wisdom of going from leasehold to buying a property outright and leasehold I found out you never actually own it and so that's something else that I learned I had to buy freehold this these terms might be unknown in America but in the UK if you buy a leasehold property you never actually own it it's always the freeholders so I learned this time to buy a freehold property wisdom was key so I'm sharing that with you. Uh, I'm hoping that that has insights for other people that are going into buying a property or their first home, because I certainly learned the hard way. And wisdom from my perspective was absolutely key in buying my second home. So Mariska, tell me, what are your thoughts about what happened in that space? I absolutely love the fact that there was learnings that not only you got from your first property to moving to your second property, also learnings that it sounds like you gained during the experience of your first property going from a, well, I love this place to a, mm, I need to be a little bit more realistic around what I can afford and possibly what you guys are asking won't be it, sorry. <laughs> There's a few hidden costs that I wasn't so, so aware of. So it is it is always interesting to see how we learn throughout the process and being aware of our learnings. I spoke to somebody the other day around their decision making, especially when it comes to conversations and having those more tricky, difficult conversations and understanding how we think about them. So a metaphor that comes to mind for us when we have those conversations can be quite revealing to understand what type of emotion it is that we're experiencing, not only in the conversation, but also bringing with us towards that conversation and maybe even the decision that we want to make. And that is so helpful in order to be able to make decisions possibly from a different perspective only by using a different type of metaphor when we are in that space. And Caroline, thank you for also educating me and hopefully some of the others around leaseholds and freeholds and understanding the property market a little bit more. Oh dear, it seems like you have muted. Oh. Sorry, thank you. I could write a book on it, thank you, <laughs> on how to buy a property and how to champion someone to uh, have your what you're looking for and be on your side and make it happen. That was something else that if I've decided to do something, then I will find champions around me that can actually move me towards my goal and my, my outcome that I ideally want. Something else that I wanted to bring up, uh, and that's, you know, sort of being a bit more frivolous. And when I'm choosing lipsticks, uh, I feel that it's that is a very emotional choice because I'm looking at the color, I'm looking at if it's natural, I'm looking at some really, some internal desires that may not be practical because when I'm looking at natural and I'm looking at mineral based, so not chemical based, uh, what I'm finding is that they're much pricier than it would be if I was buying, you know, just a, a cheap lipstick that was chemically made. And that, from my perspective, is an emotional choice because I'll, I'll slap on a color and go, Oh, yes, I love that. That's it. And I don't think about the price of it until I look at the price and I think it's OK, I'll sort it. <laughs> but when I'm looking at the the intensity of the desire for that colour, that's an emotional driven purchase. 
that's something that you know sort of it has to look right for me it has to feel right it has to have all the right bits behind it the brand has to be the right brand that comes from the place of uh, cruelty free and mineral and natural and have all the all the goodness that that you know i resonate with in terms of a person so i've given you something frivolous as a lipstick but you know that's all my makeup you know the, the the lipstick is something that's it's a big thing because you can see it and it's much more visible than maybe foundation or um eyeliner or something that's a little less less visible so how are you when you're purchasing your lipsticks I'm loving the fact that this is the frivolous one. <laughs> and it it's interesting that the way I think about lipstick, do I have an emotional response to it? I think there's some of them. So I have typically, there would be colors that I would be more drawn to. Um of course, also going for the making sure that it doesn't have weird chemicals and stuff in it because, well, that's more a me wanting to take care of the body thing. And I don't know about you, but our skin absorbs so much. So I want to give it a little bit of a time out so it doesn't need to worry about my lips absorbing weird things other than maybe healthy teas and so on. So emotional wise i would say a little i have my preferences i i have my yes this this is good ones i also have some practical elements on the lipstick that i think about for instance i won't necessarily go for things that has bright reds in it except for the fact that it doesn't necessarily you know, do me any favors it also has a tendency to bleed which I'm not a fan of because a I, I don't like all that continuous um, maintenance around my lips, having to worry about my lipstick literally having gone <laughs> all over my face, and now I look like a little clown with a big smile. There's a secret for that. <laughs> oh, Steve, and I also apparently don't know all the secrets for it. <laughs> well. A long, long, long time ago, I found something that's amazing. And mm -hmm. it's called Lip um, lip Seal. I don't know whether they've changed the name of it. but um, And I actually was studying with one of the girls whose father had created this lip seal. And it was, he manufactured it. I couldn't believe it. It was because I was raving on about this lip seal. She says, oh, my dad created that and he patented it. And lip seal, essentially, you uh, put your lipstick on, you blot it, you put it on again and you blot it again. So you have two layers and then you put the lip seal on and it keeps your lipstick in place so it doesn't bleed. And wow. I've been using it for years. And so it just, you know, when I say years, when I was studying, it was back in 1992 when I started. Okay. It's, so, it's yeah, a definitely. couple of years back, yeah. <laughs> and it was amazing because I was raving about it. And, you know, for, the, for one of my student friends that I was hanging out with as part of the study group, when she shared with me that her father had created it, I was just blown away because that's a, a real heart story. Well, we're now coming to the end of our show. Can you believe it? Oh, oh. my God. Time has gone really quickly, hasn't it? And we end on a lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is women's prerogative. For it women. surely is. So, Mariska, please, in a short, shock, shock, fire way, tell our viewers who you are, what you do, and how you can help them. And more importantly, how they can reach you so you have hopefully enjoyed the show as much as i have and mariska dupree is the name leadership development is the game if you are a leader or aspiring leader and want to up 
your level of leadership and help your team to also thrive more. Do get in contact, whether you are a new leader or working up in the leadership ranks. And you can do that via emailing me, which is mariska at journey to the number two, discover.com. Or alternatively, you can also find me on LinkedIn and send me a message so we can connect and start our conversation. I definitely look forward to hearing from you and finding out how it is that we can create a even better leader with all your strengths showing through. And Caroline, I do know that there's most probably going to be a few people with stress. So how can you help them? Thank you, Mariska. I love your number two. <laughs> it's just <laughs> very memorable. It's like my bust your stress. <laughs> Wonderfully memorable. Well, you can reach me on no more stress at live.co.uk or call on plus 44 if you're international, zero if you're local, 7523-120189. That's my contact details. You can also follow me on my social media platforms. I'm highly sociable on Facebook and you can also reach me on LinkedIn too. What do I do and how do I help people? I help people literally bust their stress. So if you have a problem, a physical, emotional, mental ache and pain, if you are suffering with anxiety, stress, depression, if you have a physical pain like low back pain or find it hard to sleep at night, or you have a relationship issue, an intimacy issue, reach out and call me and I will offer you a free consultation. I offer a 30 minute consultation to bust through one symptom. I look forward to helping you break through the root causes of what creates your stress. I offer programs if you have more than one symptom and I am sure you're walking around with more than one symptom. Well, that's it for me and that's it from Mariska. And we look forward to seeing you next week, same time, same place. Now here, it's almost 1 a.m. in the morning, GMT time. Now it's over to our sponsors. But before we go, remember, we have two A Woman's Prerogative shows. We have one at 5 p.m. on Monday's GMT time and one at midnight on a Monday night GMT time. So please check out our parts one and two because we cover the same topic, but we look at different aspects. And I look forward to seeing you at the same time next week for a woman's prerogative in partnership with E360 TV. Thank you so much to all of our viewers here watching on the live and here on the recording. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And thank you very much for listening to our show tonight. And over now to our wonderful sponsors that make this show possible. And over to Dr. Jacqueline, who has been behind the scenes producing this show and our sponsors. See you next week. USA Global TV and Radio, in partnership with Dr. Jacqueline LLC, present Amazon number one best selling author, Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck. Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck is a certified life career and executive coach who teaches people how to listen at an elevated level through her courses and her books. Dr. Kerbeck teaches her clients how to open their hearts and express themselves through their creative genius. In her children's book series, The Amazing Adventures of Lady Ella, The Listening Mentor, Dr. Kerbeck teaches children and their families how to listen at an elevated level. Dr. Kerbeck has worked with clients across the world to guide them in how to express themselves and communicate at a highly effective level. Join our team of elevated listeners so you can listen without judgment, without providing a solution, without interruption, and without stealing the stage. To order your books today, go to drjacqueline.com or Amazon. Hello, I'm children's author Diane Floyd Bain, and I am co-host for several of the USA Global TV and radio shows. 
I joined because of the purpose of the USA Global TV and Radio. They provide content for the viewers and listeners, an opportunity for people around the world to have their own show or even be a guest on an existing show. We truly believe in helping others get their positive message out to the world. We also have the opportunity for the listeners. You can watch on several platforms and on YouTube. You can ask questions and even give a comment. We absolutely love it. I love being part of the USA Global TV and radio because I love positive messages. And who doesn't? And we need more of that in the world. We are a family and we hope you will join us and become part of the family too. This program is brought to you in part by the British School of Excellence and founder, Mr. Philip Sykes, building confidence, changing lives. Do you share our view that etiquette is a set of modern life skills that are essential for personal and professional success? Join us as an etiquette coach and change people's lives through the power of etiquette and manners. The last few days have been really amazing. I uh, had the trainer trainer course from uh, the British School of Etiquette. And I must say it's been one of the best decisions I've ever made and one of the best investments I've made in, in my own training and development. Now words alone will not describe the transformation and the positive path that I have traveled with the British School of Etiquette. I find really, I, I learned a lot from the lessons this time I came. The last few days with the British School of Etiquette have been fantastic. And what I've learned now is really beyond my expectations. This is the most rewarding experience and the best investment I've made this year. It was just great, I learned so much and when I go back to Belgium I will incorporate a lot of it uh, into um, my day-to-day -day life and business. It's been absolutely wonderful for the whole week that we were here. I feel transformed and I feel like blowing a trumpet and telling people come and do this school, this class is the best, this is the best school ever. Uh, you should take it, it's just, it will change your life immediately. I am now able to teach other people how to bring the best of them. Thank you, Bessie. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you to our clients for their testimonials on the Train the Trainer program. Our exponential and global growth is so significant that we've evolved from the British School of Etiquette to the British School of Excellence, where we're investors in people. Let us invest in you and your career. Contact us to become an etiquette coach. Go to thebritishschoolofexcellence.com. Start your career and elevate your success today. When we speak, we don't hear It's abundantly clear Listening lace is creeping And nobody's gonna win Look someone in the eye If you don't, they surely will cry You don't hear a word I say Cause you always look straight away Listening laces, driving people crazy Listening laces, making us blue Listening laces, communication goes hazy Listening laces, listening laces Da da da, da 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 da, da 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 da, da 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 Listening laces, driving for crazy Listening laces, making us blue Listening laces, communication goes hazy Listening laces, listening laces when you interrupt your friend You will surely have to make amends Lady Ella knows the way To help you 
listen better every day. And what's that? It's listening lazy. Ba -ba -ba. Listening lazy, striving for crazy. Listening lazy, making us blue. Listening lazy, communication goes hazy. Listening lazy, listening lazy, listening lazy, striving for crazy. Listening lazy, making us blue. Listening lazy, communication goes hazy. Listening lazy, listening lazy, listening lazy. This program has been brought to you in part by Zane Carson Carruth, etiquette and protocol expert, international award-winning author, television show host, and philanthropist. Thank you to Zane, our official diamond sponsor for USA Global TV and Radio in partnership with E360 TV. Zane is the author of the world's first tooth fairy ever, as well as many other children's books. She's also the television host of Elegance, Polished Demeanor, and Posh Living, seen on USA Global TV and Radio. Hi, my name is Zane Carson Carruth, and I'm the author of this book, The World's First Tooth Fairy Ever. Reading is magic. Studies have shown that reading to your children lays the foundation for greater success in life. Reading helps develop language and vocabulary skills. It helps improve memory and it encourages curiosity and inspires creativity. The benefits are immeasurable and as a parent you'll benefit too. In only 10 or 15 minutes a day you'll be creating more memories and a bonding experience that will last for years to come. So take time to read to your children. Read them books about things that engage and interest them. Tales of fairies and magic fascinate children, and as everyone knows, the Tooth Fairy is at the top of the list. If your child loves magic, wands, adventure, and what child doesn't, you'll love reading them books from the trademark series The World's First Tooth Fairy Ever. Follow along as Abella, the world's first tooth fairy, accidentally starts the tooth fairy tradition. Learn the tricks of being a professional tooth fairy in the book Abella Starts a Tooth Fairy School. Your child's imagination will soar as you read the adventures of Abella and her magic wand. These wonderful books are available at worldsfirsttoothfairy.com and at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Walmart. To learn more about Zane, contact her through her website, zanecaruth.com. Z-A-N-E-C-A-R-R-U-T-H dot C-O-M. Order Zane's books and merchandise. Contact her about being a keynote speaker at your next event.